<clears throat> I'll be doing Margaret Sanger next, but let me go through this. Uh, Alfred Kinsey. And I wrote this down. Um, I, re I tend to get off on tangents, as you know. Um, I remember seeing trailers for a movie called Kinsey with Liam Neeson in the titular role. I could tell from the trailer that the movie was portraying Alfred Kinsey, whom I knew little to nothing about, as a trailblazer whose work had enhanced the lives of modern people. These trailers were on TV about a year after uh, the Iraq War began. So, what, 2004, 2005, right? Um, I came to learn things about five years ago, maybe more, uh, maybe six, I don't know, maybe around 2011, I don't know. Um, that disturbed me. A documentary uh, produced, I believe, in the 1990s called Kinsey's Pedophiles. Alfred Kinsey, the father of the sexual revolution and the reason for the existence of sex ed in public schools, had almost had, amongst other things, encouraged and paid men to rape their daughters as well as any young children, even infants. Kinsey hated religion, especially Roman Catholicism, and tried to have sex with a lot of male co-workers. He enthusiastically supported the idea of, of child, that children were sexual from birth. He encouraged uh, pedophilia, believing that anyone prosecuted or punished for child molestation was a victim of a backward, unjust system, and seeing them as a Rosa Parks or and Martin Luther King Jr.'s of their day. When the living victims, now elderly, asked the Kinsey Institute to turn over the books which Kinsey had kept detailed notes about each child molestation, they and their, their victimizer, the molester, their rapists, they, the man who was the, uh, the, the head of the Institute, cheerfully and with a beaming smile said he would burn the books if they were ever ever summoned as evidence. So it's Kinsey, his ideas now continue on. They have affected the public school systems of the United States. Um, and there are people who are his almost disciples that are living today. And um, there are victims of his experiments um, that their lives have been destroyed because of it. I mean, there were some men who he interviewed who had temptation because he first went out looking for men who engaged in sex with um, minors, extreme minors. And even, I mean, this is kind of stuff that it'll give you nightmares or it'll enrage you. Um, and then there were men who came to him who had said, I have these urges, I know that they're wrong. And he said, no, they're not wrong. And um, convince them that, no, this isn't this. It's just society and the evil uh sexual puritanism of our society that's that's the that's the evil thing um uh you should act upon these impulses i'll actually even pay you um for every experience you have with 
and it was usually the, a daughter or a daughter's friend or a child who was even a toddler. And he encouraged this and paid for them in full knowledge and subsidized um, how, God knows how many um, pedophiles and encouraged their activity, never once reporting them to the police, again, seeing them as liberators. Um, and this is the tip of the iceberg. Um, if I find the um, Kinsey's Pedophiles, the documentary, I'll make sure to include it in the link. But there is also, um, because uh, when I had mentioned this before, somebody said, oh yeah, there's a there's somebody who's trying to expose him by the name of Dr. Ruth Reisman. Um, and I had read a couple things by, uh, some things that were on the Daily Wire, uh, the Daily Mail. And let me see if I can pull them up and just read you some excerpts from uh, what she had to say. Um, Dr. Judith Reisman. Uh, the truth behind Alfred Kinsey. Um, go back. A lot about Kinsey here. Oh, a brief history of legal actions threatened by and filed against the Kinsey Institute related to Kinsey's fraudulent research. Um, now, now here's something important. Um, Reisman going on TV. If she was to discuss any of Kinsey's books, again, books that are published in, and open to the public, it's fair use to discuss and critique them, Kinsey Institute threatened to sue because there's a whole page, whole diagram about um, sexual molestation of children, what we would call rape, pedophilic rape child rape and chapters on enthusiastic sub chapters that enthusiastically support it in his works um, i'm not going to go through this whole thing right now um by judith reisman um but there are videos uh dr judith reisman exposing the kinsey sex cult see i haven't watched any of these um although I probably should. Um, and then I see books here. It says by different authors, Sexual Sabotage, uh, that came out in 2010. Uh, 1998, Kinsey, Crimes and Consequences, Kinsey, Sex Fraud, and the Indoctrination of a People, Stolen Honor, Stolen Innocence. Uh, 2012 yeah and um sex ed this is where we get our sex ed from and this is what got the sexual revolution started um because you know what being married and having children to a woman you love and you're monogamous too is just deplorable and is um just you're totally sexual repressed and you can't be happy now, a grown man having sex with prepubescent boys, prepubescent girls, um, many mistresses, and even having incest relationship. Now, that is the liberated man. That's what Kinsey thought. And yet he's portrayed um, by the progressive Hollywood as this um, gentle scientific man who went around and liberated a generation of people. I mean, this man is responsible for the swingers of the 70s. Uh, funny how before all this sexual revolution crap, 
people were more sexually satisfied. And actually, uh, people living in traditional roles in parts of Latin America and Africa, um, both spouses um, consistently report as being happier with their partner and in life than does the uh, one who habitually marries and divorces and has a strained relationship with his children, but gets sex from a lot of different ways. So it's, it's sickening. Um, public schools are more and more and more and more and ever increasingly about indoctrination of unnatural ideas and unnatural views, even things innocuous as like social studies. Um, but sex ed, give me a break. When I was in school, sex ed taught me that, um, you know, many of us were going to die of the HIV virus. And then when I got older into my early 20s, me and all of my friends, all of them, didn't believe that the HIV virus existed. Why? Because none of us got it. Now, we were having heterosexual sex. You know, um, with girls who were not extremely promiscuous. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can't really get it that way. But we were told, yeah, no, that's, that's what it was going to be, you know, and, um, that it had broken out of its, um, its, uh, initial, you know, its initial target groups, which were, um, you know, certain, um, IV drug users, homosexual community, and a, uh, What was it? Another, another one. Uh, certain black African communities, both in tropical settings and in some parts of the United States, um, among black males, not even females. Uh, guess what? That was in the early 90s. And they said, if you have HIV AIDS, Three to seven years is the maximum amount of time you'd live. Get your affairs in order, you're going to die. Now you can basically arrest the disease and go on living. But for a long time, I mean, just, you know, four kids from the west side of Chicago living in Little Village in Lawndale in the Pilsen neighborhood. There was no HIV AIDS. Not for us, not, not for what we got taught. And they wound up producing many people who, uh, some people who I, I ran into that I knew from childhood, um, still don't believe HIV AIDS is real because they lied to us in sex ed. They lied to us. They absolutely lied to us. Because, no, if everybody can't isn't at equal threat to get it, then nobody will care about it. Not true. But that's it. You know, it's, again, that whole idea of that the general public should educate your children on sex and what, what what's normal and what's not. And fact that they feel like they must lie to you uh, in case somebody might uh, you know feel uncomfortable about a um, somebody who has multiple gay partners over a weekend and is also an ivory drug user that you might you know not want to uh, you 
you might be apprehensive if that person cuts themselves. Well, yeah, because they're in the Venn diagram of things, they're most likely the ones to have HIV AIDS. It's not gotten out of its risk group um, since it was first discovered. So there's a lie that was taught to us in sex ed, and most of the things taught to us in sex ed weren't true. I was taught that 10% of the population is homosexual, is gay, and that's of men. Find out it's more between 0.5 and 2% of the population. All right, peace to you.